you ever dined with the king? There is usually so much to eat. Have you ever been wooed by a king? By royalty? Won't you just say yes? This is a king's invitation. Don't you dare say no. Leave your dreams, experience heaven and earth, make this trip. Rendezvous spot, the Christ Family Assembly, Word Communication Ministries, Welcome. Number 1 Faith Drive off Kudati Avenue, Onireke GRA Ibadan. Dates, Sundays at 8 a.m. and Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30 p.m. for an interactive session of Digging Deep into the Word of God, where you have the opportunity to ask questions. Dress code as you are. Why do we do things that are unprofitable? Why do we waste time? Why do we waste resources? Why do we invest in things that won't work? Invest our time, invest our energy, invest our money and resources only to lose out. Because we don't often ask God. We don't receive leading. It's a place to be, belong, and become all you were created to be. Word Communication Ministries welcome experiencing life before death. We need God. We are not created to live without Him. And one of the greatest blessings we have as children of God, as believers, as Christians, that gives us advantage and leverage over those who do not yet know God is this great promise that God will guide us continually. Our access to divine guidance is one of the great blessings of our faith. This guarantees that we don't have to live our life by guesses and by gamble. A lot of people in the world live their life by guesses and by gamble. But as Christians, we don't have to live by guesses and by gamble. We can be directed and guided by God in specific ways to go and in specific actions to take. We can know what to do each time to get to the end we desire or we want. And this leads us to becoming target shooters. This leads us to become target shooters. And we must all aim at becoming target shooters. You have a revelation of where you want to go. And you know how to get there without wasting time and resources. A lot of times our resources are wasted. Many times because we do things by guessing. We gamble with life. Then when we are guided continually by God, when we are led continually by God, we will never have to waste time. We will never have to waste resources we will never be ineffective. We will never be unproductive. Every action we take will be precise and productive and effective. May God grant us grace to live life at this level in the name of Jesus. So, as we seek and follow God's direction totally, blessings, Growth, increase, come in our lives. 
safety, preservation, peace becomes our lot. The advantage and the blessings in being guided by God are limitless. I can't exhaust them. But if you sincerely desire to live quality life, to live a productive life, to live an effective life, to enjoy your life, and make the best out of your life, one of the greatest things that you must seek is to be led by God. To be led by God. Brethren, the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong. It's of God who shows mercy. One of the ways the mercy of God is shown to you is by being told by God exactly what to do. All this running from pillar to post, from the north to the south, east to the west, only at the end of the day to have little or nothing to show for all the running. Doesn't make sense. Why don't we take time to get to know how to be led by God? Why don't we take time to learn the things that are necessary to make our lives effective before we start running? Right? Let's learn what we need to learn first before we start running. Let's look at a few of these promises of divine guidance. Our test is number one. The Lord will guide you continually. Can I hear somebody say, the Lord will guide me continually. That's one of the promises of God that has not struck the consciousness of some of us. The Lord wants to guide us continually. Not sometimes, not occasionally, but continually, all of the time, all of our lives. God wants to guide us as his children. Another promise is in Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you, shall, you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes. Praise God. God is very clear. Why do we run when we have not heard from him? Why do we do things when we have not heard from him? He said, I will instruct you. Many of us will run without instruction. We move without instruction. But God says, I will instruct you. And I will teach you. Not only will I instruct you, I will also teach you in the way you should go. And I will guide you with my eyes. Glory to God. Let's look at another. Because out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, that there are so many, I can't exhaust them. Let's look at Isaiah 48 verse 17. Isaiah 48 verse 17. Thus says the Lord, this is God speaking, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, and the Lord your God, who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. If we take this verse literally, it means as believers, we should never do anything that is unprofitable. Why do we do things that are unprofitable? Why do we waste time? Why do we waste resources? Why do we invest in things that won't work? Invest our time, invest our energy, invest our money, and resources only to lose out because we don't often ask God. We don't receive leading. We think we know it. 
We think we know what to do, how to do. So we ignore God often. That he says, I am your redeemer. So he's actually talking to the redeemed. God is talking to the redeemed. If you are the redeemed, this is what your redeemer says. The Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit. That when God teaches you, when God instructs you, you will make profit. Whatever action you take, as a consequence of God's instruction and God's leading will always lead to profiting. Take it or leave it. Any action you take and it does not bring profit, you were not led. You didn't seek God's guidance. Or maybe you sought it, but you didn't hear properly. He says, it's the Lord who leads us in the way we shall go. Beloved brethren, if we begin to take the issue of the my guardian seriously, very, very seriously, and we apply our hearts to it, every step we take, every step we take will lead us to our destiny. Yes, we say a number of things, they are true. No, they are facts, but they are not the truth. They are facts of life, but they are not the truth. One of them. Everyone who ever succeeds failed before. It's a fact of life. But if we go by the truth, Many people ought to succeed without ever failing. If we take the truth by what the truth is, we can succeed without ever recording a single failure. So the truth is, we can succeed without ever failing. But it's a lot of work on ourselves to get to that realm. And that's the realm in this teaching we are all trying to move to. Including myself. That's the realm we are trying to move to. And God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 14 of Romans 8. Romans 8 verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. That scripture is strong. The implication of that scripture will rock the belief of many of us. If I'm to take it literally, here it is. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. It means those who are not led by the Spirit of God, they are not the sons of God. Hey! If you are a son of God, you must be led by the Spirit. If your Christianity is to be authenticated, and you must make up your mind, I want to live a genuine Christian life. If you say you are born again and you do not pay attention and seek to be led by the Spirit of God, you are not born again. Your Christianity is no Christianity. It's fake Christianity. Are you listening to me? That's strong, isn't it? It should be strong. So, I want to challenge each one of us today to make up your mind. I want to authenticate my faith in Christ. I want to authenticate my Christianity. I will not be satisfied with fake Christianity. Am I talking? Are the teenagers listening? This is the time to develop it early. 
Most of us, your parents, eh? we got to where we are by a chance. <laughs> Palpitation. <laughs> Guess. That's why our journey seems so long. And many of us are still far from destination and old age is catching up. <laughs> Am I talking? You know what I'm talking. All these people, they know what I'm talking. Many of them are still far. Where we ought to have been at 30, we are still struggling to be there. <laughs> at 50, 60, some at 70, some never even get there at all. Why? Because it's needed by guesswork. Guesses. Well, we may say it's not our fault, but we take responsibility. But you, you are more privileged than some of us. The revelation that we have today, the teachings we have today, many didn't have the privilege. Of course, the reality is that many of us just fail to apply our hearts to the things we have been taught over the years. We have been lazy. We are not diligent in giving access to the world. We are full of activities. Just doing moves. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. It means those who are the sons of God are led by the Spirit. Those who are the sons of God are led by the Spirit. Praise God. Now, in seeking divine guidance, I want to give us a warning. I want to warn us. We must be careful not to go astray while seeking God's guidance. A lot of people go astray while seeking God's guidance. There are two main pitfalls we need to watch for and avoid when you are seeking divine guidance. Two main pitfalls to avoid when you are seeking divine guidance. The first one is being subjective or objective. Being objective versus being subjective. I will explain. I will take the two one by one. The first one is what I call intellect objectivity. Intellect objectivity. This one rejects all subjective Christian experiences. It rejects all subjective Christian experiences. What do I mean by that? It will do nothing unless it will do nothing unless it is logical, rational, and intellectually reasonable. For instance, when Jesus appeared to disciples on the sea, that night they were troubled on the sea, Jesus appeared. And then Peter asked, and Jesus said, Come! And Peter stepped into the water and started walking on water. The objective person will not walk on water. <laughs> say, ah, come on, come on. It's not reasonable. It's not, it's not sensible. Ah, 
You are not Jesus. Now how can he ask you to come over? You will sing go. Are you with me? Those who have who allow themselves to only be led by intellectual objectivity we miss God a lot. A lot of the time, our walk with God is a call to walk by faith. Some of the things God is going to instruct you to do will involve taking risk. Are you listening to me? But the objective person doesn't want to take any risk. He will wait and wait and wait and wait. It has to appeal to his intellect before he would take step. If that's the kind of person you want to be, a lot of time you will miss God. You will not be led. You will miss the leading of the spirit. So you have to be careful subjecting everything to intellectual objectivity. Did I make myself clear? Are you getting me? All right. The second one is intuition subjectivity. You know what intuition is? What you just feel from the inside. That intuition subjectivity. I hope you are getting me. The first one is intellect objectivity. You have to be objective now. You know how many times you have said that. Look, 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 brethren. Let's be objective. The other side is intuition subjectivity. This borders on what I would call dangerous mysticism. Right? For instance, anybody who is subjective will not eat fruit for breakfast unless he hears a voice from heaven. Eh? If you are taught that, look, for health reasons, it has been scientifically proved that you should eat fruit for breakfast first thing in the morning say ah along will lead me <laughs> eh? it tries to mystify everything there are certain things that god has set you don't need any mysterious voice to tell it to you anymore but these people know things that they should naturally do. They want to, they want a mystical leading before they can do it. There is need for us to maintain a balance between these two, being objective and being subjective. There is a story of a man of God who was subjective and not objective. He felt a leading. He felt an intuition, let me say, to go to an island for mission. So he came to the church and told them, God is asking us to go to this particular island on mission. So why they were going? The man who was taking them in the canoe was wondering, in the ferry, was wondering. When they saw the equipment, the huge speakers, amplifiers, guitars, keyboard, all the people. So he was wondering, what are you people going to do 
in this island. He said, oh, we are going for mission to preach the gospel to the people there. He kept quiet. And later, as they were, he said, but this island is an uninhabited island. And they got there. Nobody lives in that island. That's a person who was being subjective. Now, you will not have full understanding until I begin to get into the But the fact is, this person, if God is asking you to go to an island, and you are going to raise a team of 30 people, you are going to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars. People are going to leave their work for weeks or a week and travel thousands of kilometers flying and going by sea. What stops you? First of all, go to the internet, Google the name of this island, and read about the island. The fact that you are led by God doesn't say you can't read about the island. Or maybe in those days, there was no internet. Just take one man or yourself. Travel to the island. Go and do a pre-visit. And if you find out, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> End of story. Of course, he lost credibility as a leader. The Christ Family Assembly Word Communication Ministries Welcome Number 1 Faith Drive Off Kudati Avenue Onireke GRA Ibadan Dates Sundays at 8am And Thursdays between 5.30 and 7.30pm For an interactive session Of digging deep into the Word of God Where you have the opportunity to ask questions Dress code as you are It's a place to be Belong And become all who are created to be Word Communications Ministries welcome experiencing life before death. <laughs>